Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette and our series, Is It Worth It? Today, we discuss the TOTS driving mocks and if they're worth $495 or not. For more videos from our Is It Worth It? series about iconic menswear items, please take a look here. First, let me talk about the history of TOTS, then about the features of the shoes, the pros and cons, and last but not least, if I think they're worth it or not. What is today known as Todd's was founded in Italy in the 1920s by Filippo della Valle as a small shoemaking factory. By the 1950s and 60s, they mostly produced private label shoes for brands including Saks Fifth Avenue and Bergdorf Goodman in the US. It remained a small family-owned business until the founder's grandson, Diego della Valle, took over. This was in the 70s, and Diego had gone to New York and saw a shoe that he really liked. It was a moccasin-style construction shoe with a rubber pebble nub sole. The leather wasn't that high quality, so he decided to bring it back to Italy, refine the design, and make it part of their shoe line. It quickly became their signature model, dubbed Il Gomino. Shortly after the shoe was in production, uh, Diego de la Vare smartly gifted a pair to Gianni Agnelli, which was recognized as a style icon. He liked the shoe and he wore it on TV, which really boosted the sales. In 1984, Diego de la Vare decided to change the name to make it more Anglo-American sounding, and so it became J.P. Tots. The company once again changed their name to just Tots, dropping the J.P. in 1997. In the 80s and 90s, Tots particularly gained a reputation for casual driving mocks. It was their shoe. Iconic superstars such as Princess Diana helped propelling the brand forward by wearing Tots shoes. Today, unlike many other luxury brands, Tots owns and maintains all of their manufacturing facilities. That enabled them to withstand going offshore to lower production countries, and it's their way of keeping up the brand promise of made in Italy and quality. If you look at it from a branding perspective, they did an excellent job. The Todd's umbrella includes brands like Hogan, Faye, or Roger Vivier. Across all their companies, they produce more than 2 million pairs of shoes a year, and they actually grew throughout the last recession in 2009. Today, it's a billion dollar company. Now enough said about Todd's the company. Let's take a closer look at the shoe. The model we have here, it's called La Seto Gomini, and it retails for $495 in the US. It is, of course, made in Italy, but other than the fact that it has some laces, letters, and a rubber knob sole, there's really not much more information on their website. Considering it's almost $500 expensive, I find that quite disappointing personally because they don't say anything about the construction really, about the leather that's used, whether it's cowhide or calf hide, whether it's aniline dyed or not, and as a consumer who's educated, I would like to know that information. So what is the shoe? From the outside, it is not a true 100% moccasin construction, and you can learn more about what constitutes a true moccasin in this video here. We also talk about driving mocks in general, so it's a good additional video to watch if you watch this one. The shoe has the characteristic rubber pebble nubs that allow the shoe the same flexibility as if it would be with an all leather sole. At the same time, it lasts longer than a just leather sole moccasin. Of course, the lifespan is still shorter compared to a regular men's dress shoe with a leather sole or a rubber sole. It's a very unstructured shoe. It has no heel cap and no toe cap and is thus very comfortable to wear. You can see it's made for driving because the rubber pebbles go up all the way to the heel because when you drive, that's where you need the grip. Because $495 is quite a bit of money for just a driving shoe, a lot of men also wear them as casual shoes, especially during the summer. The problem is, without the structured heel cap and toe cap, they're not ideal for walking, they get bigger, and the leather sole wears out a lot faster. In my experience, a driving mock with rubber pebble nubs will wear it usually within one or two seasons, and then it can't be repaired. Of course, you might think of adding maybe a rubber sole, but then you end up more with something like a boat shoe, and you could buy it from the get-go for a lot less money than this driving mock. The other letter comes in a nice blue, and 
I think it's made of a shrunken calf leather or cowhide. Again, nothing's mentioned on the website, but if you take a closer look, you can see it has somewhat of a scotch grain texture, but it's not achieved by embossing it, but simply by shrinking the leather. I find it quite nice and it's also a little more durable than suede leather, which is also something they offer with the Tots mocks. I used to have one in red in the past. The mock seam in the front of the shoe is supposedly done by hand. And whenever you do that, taking leather and sewing it into something three-dimensional, you get vertical lines. Because here we have a shrunken leather, you see even more pronounced lines that are vertical. The shoe is also leather lined seemingly with an undyed and that leather that doesn't color off, especially when you wear bare feet during the summer. It's really nothing special on the inside, and for the price, I would have hoped for a bit more contrast or something interesting. The insole is covered with one piece of leather lining, and underneath, you can find a rubber wedge that is a little more cushy and more comfortable to stand in them. At the same time, it's not made all of leather, like the most high-quality men's dress shoes, for example. In terms of sizing, I usually wear a size 11 US or 10.5 UK in a medium with last. For the tots, I had to size down and go with a 10. So keep in mind, it's a large shoe and it's one that will stretch out over time. So you always wanna go rather with a more snugly fitting shoe than with something that is too wide. Each pair of tots mocks is made out of 35 pieces in a hundred steps, and while that sounds like a lot, if you compare it to a Goodyear wilted or Blake stitched men's dress shoe, that is actually quite little because Goodyear welt is a lot more complex, requires more parts and time. So the big question, are Todd's mocks worth it? First, let's look at the cons. To me, one of the biggest cons is that it's not a shoe that will last me 15 or 20 years if I regularly wear it because it has this leather sole with the rubber pebbles, which is super flexible, but it also wears out very quickly if I use it in everyday wear. And because of that, it can't be repaired because once there's a hole in your sole, it's not like you can fix it. Essentially, it makes it a disposable shoe. And if you just use it as a driving shoe, it's quite expensive on its own. Also, it's not a shoe you wanna wear when it's wet outside because the water will go right through the leather up onto your socks and feet, which is quite uncomfortable. Frankly, if you live in a cooler climate with lots of snow and rain, this is not a shoe I would ever invest in. Maybe if you're in Italy or in a warmer climate and you like casual summer shoes, it's something to think about. At the end of the day, buying Tots driving mocks is still mostly a brand buy. Fortunately, the Tots branding is not obnoxious. They have a little Tots logo at the bottom sole, as well as at the top right corner of the shoe. It's very subtle, tone in tone, yet most people will recognize it as a Tots simply because they're very vibrant colors and a very unique style. Looking at the shoe over whole, the construction method, the materials that go into it, I think it should retail more at the $200 to $250 price range and not at the $500 price range. But of course, when it comes to pricing, branding is everything, and Tots has done a fantastic job in positioning their brand and maintaining high prices. So what are the pros? Even though a shoe can wear out pretty quickly, the style itself is rather timeless, and you'll be able to wear it in 10 or 20 years down the line. Even though you would assume other brands can simply replicate the style, I still think Tots has an edge when it comes to their styling versus other brands on the market. One of the biggest pros of Tots mocks is probably that they come in a large number of colors in different letters, including suede and exotic skins such as Crocodile. To my knowledge, there's no other brand that offers such a wide range. If you're just interested in black or brown mocks, that's not that big of a deal, but if you want something maybe in blue, in red, in yellow, or in green, Tots definitely has the widest selection. On top of that, they have various additions that change throughout the seasons, sometimes with fabric or velvet. You call it, probably there's a Tots mock out there that has that material that you're looking for. So ultimately, are they worth it to me? I have to say, no, they're not, because if I just want a driving shoe, and that's what the Tots mocks are, I can just buy a regular boat shoe, maybe a pair of Sperry's, and they cost me $100 or less, and they essentially do the same job. On top of that, I can wear them in a casual setting and they will last a lot longer because they have a solid rubber sole. If I wear the Tots mocks otherwise, they wear out quickly and become a disposable item. 
Also, I think you find better value with other brands. For example, let's look at Rancour, which are handmade in Maine in the US. They offer their driving mocks with a pebble grain sole for $295. Again, they have a more limited color spectrum off the rack, but they have different styles, such as a penny style or maybe a regular leather lace style. Now, if you really want a colorful shoe, Rancour offers a made-to-order program where you can pick the exact sole configuration, the style, as well as the leather, and you can even mix and match so you can create spectators and truly create a unique shoe for you for $395, which is 20% less than the Tots. If you enjoyed this guide, make sure to check out our other videos on items like a Montclair jacket or maybe a Burberry trench coat or a Mont Blanc fountain pen. And you can see all the videos of our Is It Worth series here. In today's video, I'm wearing a somewhat casual combination consisting of a turtleneck sweater in wool with a tweed coat, some light blue chinos that work well with my light blue and gray socks from Fort Belvedere, as well as my Fort Belvedere pocket square in light blue with paisley patterns. The shoes are of course Tots driving mocks in that blue shrunken calf style, and of course it's the Gomino shoe. As mentioned before, during the warmer times of the year, I could also wear them barefoot.